In today's video, I'm gonna show you two ways to make tax planning a whole heck of a lot easier for you in retirement. The two concepts I'm gonna discuss here are the building blocks that we use for each and every one of our clients, and I hope to walk you through this framework. Now, it's a common adage that taxes will be lower in retirement. Because of this, I see a subset of retirees that don't really focus that much on taxes. I would urge you to rethink this. Taxes will be one of, if not your largest expense in retirement. And keep in mind that a dollar saved is as good as a dollar made. The reason tax planning should be more of a focus in retirement is because of the options that you have. You have more capabilities in terms of lowering your tax bill. When you're working, you don't really have a lot of options. You earn your weekly paycheck and outside of contributing to your 401k or maybe a few other deductions, you don't have a lot of options. Because of this, overall taxes tend to be a little bit higher because basically everything you earn is taxed. Now, retirement's quite a bit different. Different income streams in retirement have different tax liabilities. IRAs and pensions are fully taxed on ordinary income tax rates. But outside of that, most other income is treated preferentially. At most, only a portion of your Social Security benefit will be taxed. Capital gains and dividend income is taxed at lower rates. And then obviously we have Roth money that can be withdrawn tax-free. Now, because of this, your effective tax rate will be lower in retirement, but effective tax rate is simply a summary number. You find it by taking the amount you owe in taxes and then dividing by the total income that you generated. When it's said that your taxes will be lower in retirement, this is what is meant your effective tax rate will and should be lower in retirement. For instance, if you were an individual in, let's say, Pennsylvania, and you were earning $120,000 per year from a W-2 job, your total effective tax rate would be 18.43%, as you would owe about $22,000 in taxes. On the right, I have an example showing someone living on $120,000 in retirement. Same income generated, but you'll see a far lower effective tax rate at 13.3%. And the reason for this is basically the makeup of their income. They're using social security and capital gain income streams, which will lower their overall tax liability. But here's the problem many retirees run into. They focus solely on effective tax rate, and by doing so, miss out on some major planning opportunities. Effective tax rate has no decision-making power. And although your effective tax rate may be lower in retirement, your marginal tax rate is often not. In fact, your marginal tax rate is much higher in retirement often than it was while working. Now, what is the difference between effective tax rate and marginal tax rate? Well, marginal tax rate looks at the incremental cost of income. Think about it this way. Let's say that you're going to run your personal best or you're aiming to run your personal best in a 5K, which is 3.1 miles. You run mile one in eight minutes, mile two is much slower at 11 minutes, and then you finish mile three at, again, eight minutes per mile. Now, your average mile pace is about nine minutes per mile, but knowing your pace was nine minutes per mile doesn't inform you on how to do better. Instead, you'd want to look at each incremental mile, and you'd see that, holy crap, mile two is much slower. How do we improve that mile? This is basically what looking at your marginal rate allows you to do. Here's a snapshot of what this retiree in Pennsylvania's marginal tax rate would actually look like. In red, I have the retirement marginal rate. In blue, I have their working income marginal rate. Due to how Social Security is taxed, what you'll see is a spike in your marginal tax rate in retirement that is much higher than what you would have seen while working. For instance, if we add in their Social Security benefit, at about $80,000 of total income, this retiree would be taxed at a whopping 40.7% marginal tax rate. Now keep in mind the top income tax bracket is only 37%. So this is a much higher marginal rate than most will ever see while working. And this is concept number one. To be successful at tax planning and retirement, we need to be focusing on marginal tax rates. At every incremental level of income you add, you wanna be asking yourself, what is the tax cost of this income and does it make sense for me to be taxed at this rate? Or should I take income from more tax preferential spaces like your Roth or brokerage account instead? To further drive home the lack of decision-making power that effective tax rate has, let's look at two points on a chart. So we already know that this retiree would have seen a higher marginal rate of 40.7%. If prudently possible, we'd obviously like to avoid this high tax rate. But let's say we didn't see this marginal tax rate and instead, we were only looking at effective tax rate. 
looking at only effective tax rate, you'd never know this marginal tax increase really existed or you wouldn't know to the extent. Before seeing this tax increase zone, your effective tax rate would be 6.3%. Over the next $17,000 worth of income, you would see that effective tax rate rise to 12%. So that's a pretty substantial increase. But again, if all you saw was this summary effective tax rate number, it's not clear what this means unless you run further calculations. And so this brings us to concept number two. Now that we know the importance of marginal tax rate, we wanna develop a roadmap that we can use each and every year we're retired. This should be something your advisor walks you through each year or your CPA. If we take our marginal tax rate and map it out over increasing levels of income, we can now start to make really strong tax decisions just from looking at one simple chart. Let's take a look at another retiree living in North Carolina. They have $35,000 of social security benefits and you can see their marginal tax rate chart on the screen. From a 30 second glance, I bet you can already start making some pretty strong tax decisions. At about $38,000 of income over their social security benefit, they see a pretty substantial tax rate increase due to the social security tax torpedo, this double taxation effect that we've covered in numerous videos on our Safeguard Wealth Management YouTube channel. Then at about $65,000 of additional income, they would be subject to IRMA, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes here. Now the strategy this retiree wants to implement is gonna be entirely dependent on their situation. If they have a lot of control over their tax situation, meaning they don't have large RMDs and they have decent diversification between each tax bucket, they might wanna take $20,000 from their IRAs. Then above that, take additional monies from brokerage and Roth accounts to avoid those higher marginal tax rates. If they have less control and they need to take, let's say a $50,000 RMD, they might either wanna consider QCD and 10 to $15,000 to charity to avoid that large tax hump or they want to fill in with additional income up to that first IRMA zone to spread out that tax liability from that increase in their marginal rate. The point being, clear decision making can be made from seeing this chart. Now, there is one wrinkle to this that will complicate things a little bit more and, and is very important to understand. As you add in income from certain accounts, you will change the marginal tax chart that we're showing here. This is because as income streams stack on one another, their coordination can create additional spikes. For instance, let's add in $8,000 of, let's say, dividend income. Now we see this chart transform where there is now an additional hump at about $30,000 of IRA income. For further explanation on how this hump is created, watch this video right here in the upper right-hand corner. But now we see their marginal rate rise well above 50%. Now, most retirees will never look at this type of marginal tax chart and therefore will willy-nilly add income and simply look at their effective tax rate come tax time. The good news with this approach, ignorance can be bliss. The bad news is, however, you pay more in taxes than you need to and therefore fail at adequate tax planning. Remember, effective tax rates will generally look lower in retirement, and so at tax time, your effective tax rate might look satisfactory at that point in time but it could be lower if you looked at the marginal tax rate charts. By looking at this type of chart, you would have likely made very different tax decisions. The final idea I wanna cover is spurred on by a lot of questions I get around Medicare's IRMA. IRMA is a penalty that causes you to owe more for Part B and Part D premiums if you show too much income. IRMA is a two-year look back and is also a tax cliff. So if you show $1 over the IRMA limit, you will have the full penalty, whether you show $1 or $10,000 over. Well, how can you think about this dollarized expense in terms of the marginal tax rate then? Well, we're gonna have to do some marginal tax math by hand. For instance, let's say that we are a retiree with $108,000 of income due to a large RMD that we are forced to take. For 2025 IRMA, that will be based on 2023 income. Now we expect the first IRMA threshold, if we're looking at uh, inflation being about 3%, to be at $103,000. Now, obviously $108,000 is $5,000 more than that IRMA threshold then. So by going into this threshold, we have a penalty that totals $996 for the year. Now this penalty is very costly tax-wise if we don't use any other tax tactics here. Now, if you have $5,000 that causes you to owe an extra $996 on top of the taxes you would already owe, that works out to almost a 20% add-on tax rate due to IRMA. Total marginal rate on the last $5,000 then is 46.6%. But remember, this is a tax cliff. 
So we can continue to show more income without owing any extra Medicare expenses. We could show up to $130,000 worth of income, and then by adding more income, we will still owe the income tax, but we then spread out the tax burden of the Medicare penalty, thereby lowering that marginal rate. If you brought your income up to the next IRMA threshold, you'd find that the IRMA add-on tax rate only ends up being 3.69%. Add this on to our state and Fed taxes, and now our marginal tax liability due to IRMA goes from nearly 47% in the previous example down to 30%. And so we see that marginal rate planning helps us not only make better decisions when comparing federal and state taxes, but also when we get into thinking about other retirement tax hurdles like IRMA. The point here being, there is no way you can adequately tax plan year to year in retirement without understanding marginal rates and then planning with a marginal tax rate graph. A marginal tax rate graph is a tool that we use with each and every one of our clients, and I urge you to use it in your retirement as well. If you don't have a CPA or an advisor that can generate this for you, I'd recommend looking for a second opinion. Now, if you like this video and are wanting to get more out of your retirement nest egg, click on this video right here and learn more about the five most important years of your retirement. Making sure you're optimizing these five years will mean a better retirement for the next 20 to 30 after those five years. Thanks for watching and always remember, you don't need more money, you need a better plan. Thanks for watching.